a fitting welcome. That's what Michigan gave USC, and that's what Tennessee gave Oklahoma, as they are now part of new conferences inside the Big Ten and the SEC. We're going to talk about that also. What in the hell happened at Chapel Hill on Saturday? Let's talk about it. Bear down the gridiron starts right now. I feel blessed as ever then. I'm the best I've ever been. Okay. So with the yes, you know how I feel. What's up? I, I, I'm going to tell you I feel amazing. Ooh. I feel blessed as ever then. Ooh. I'm the best. What's up, good people? How y'all doing today? On this Wednesday, September 25th, 2024, I am in the building. This is Bearing Down a Gridiron. We got some college football stuff to talk about. As you heard in the opening, Michigan and Tennessee gave fitting welcomes to USC and Oklahoma. We gonna try to find out what the hell happened to Trapper Hill over the weekend. And also in Pro Bowl, because uh, a Big 12 school got blasted on the road but before we get to all that thank y'all for tuning in thank y'all for, for subscribing those of you who have subscribed to our youtube channel the playmakers ball youtube channel if you haven't hit that notification hit that uh bell if you're watching on our youtube channel so that you can be here when we go live or when we post any of our videos up here on the playmakers Ball sports network also you can watch this on the playmakers blog facebook channel and my personal darnell silence linkedin page this episode of the Bearing Down the Green will be available on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, iHeartRadio, and the Real Rise Radio. Shout out to my man, Real Wise. You'll be hearing this Saturday mornings, 11 a.m. to 12, getting you ready for kickoff of your noon games on the Real Rise Radio. And also, you can hear this on 502 American Angel, Friday, prime time after shooting lights out. So those are all you can catch Bearing Down the Green on that. Now, let's get started because, you know, those of you who are new, got to get you your news and knows, and I do that in the two-minute drill. And to begin our two-minute drill, Memphis, Tulane, South Florida, and Texas San Antonio all commit to the American Conference of mixed interest from the Pac-12. Pac-12 did show interest in these schools, but Pac-12 ended up doing something else, and these... Four schools here are staying in the American Conference as of right now. Plus, anything is liable to change because we know we've seen what Conference Realignment has done thus far, and uh, anything is anything is possible when it comes to college football. Let's just call it what it is. Anything, anything is possible. All right. Quinn Yo's questionable for that SEC debut of Texas. When they play host to Mississippi State this weekend, Archie Manning did look good. He had his little struggles early on, but overall looked good in his first career start in college. So, necessarily won't be a bad thing to see Archie Manning start on Saturday. But you would like to see Quinn Ernst, you know, get his get his taste of the SEC football. You know, because he has been the star quarterback for what the last two seasons and then this season. So we want to see him get his shine. But Archie Manning versus Mississippi State shouldn't be a problem. You still got Georgia on the schedule, you still got Oklahoma on the schedule. So I'm pretty sure you that can get Quint Earns back for the big games. If Archie needed to start this game, it shouldn't be no problem. I think Texas can handle business at home against Mississippi State. All right, no problem. Now let's get to a little more serious news. Tropical Storm Haley forces FMU to postpone Alabama AM game. Yes, those of you who know me, yes, I am living in the state of Florida. And yes, we do have right now that is a tropical storm Haley bearing down 
through the Gulf Coast, not the Atlantic Coast, the Gulf Coast coming. So not only Florida, looking at Florida, Louisiana, Alabama, Mississippi State too, I think. Yeah, they miss the state of Mississippi as well. All could be impacted within the next 20, I would say the next 12 to at least for at least 12 to the next 72 hours. Going into the weekend, if I'm being honest, it's possible. So, yes, Florida A&M postponed a game against Alabama A&M to, to right now tropical storm Haley, who could be a hurricane in a short amount of time. Okay, so those are, those of you who are in these areas, and I'm in one of them, I'm in Jacksonville, so it's possible I could get hit too. Hope y'all getting ready, getting safe, because there, there's a projection that Haley could be a hurricane category three by the time he makes landfall into Florida. So we want to make sure everybody's prepared, everybody got everything that they need, and hopefully you are safe and sound when and if the hurricane hits. All right. Now back to Pac-12 because of Utah State. A sales and invitation to become the seventh member of the real building Pac 12. Now, those of you who was with me last week, we talked about Colorado State, Fresno State, San Diego State, and Boise State all joining the Pac 12 along with Oregon State and Washington State. Now we add in Utah State. Utah State is moving on, they are coming in. And it says Utah State accepted the invitation to join the Pac-12 and become the Lewis and become the newly formed Conference Seventh member. After receiving a formal application, the Pac-12 board of directors voted unanimously to admit Utah State into its league, effective July first, twenty twenty-six. The moves comes amid a dazzling few days of realignment that saw the Pac-12's interest in a handful of American conference schools get rebuttal. The Mountain West expected to retain a commitment from key member Air Force and UVA's decision becomes uncertain after its commitment to the Mountain West earlier in the day was not formalized. Yes, this is getting interesting. Very, very interesting. Oh, my brother, Coach Johnson's in the building. What's up? My man, Coach said, Pat 12 would have to reach it themselves as the state conference. How about the Pacific State Conference? Because it really the PAC really stands for Pacific Athletic Conference. So let's drop the A and put the S right there. Pacific State Conference, because you got all the states. Washington State. Oregon State. Boise State. Colorado State. Utah State. That's state, 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 state. Jeez Louise. But we're not done with the Pac-12 and their poaching of the Mountain West. <laughs> because UNLV says, oh, well, since the since Utah State is joining the uh, Louis Farm Pac-12, um, I think we probably need to um, look at options for ourselves because uh, UVA is suspected to re-engage in conversation with the Pac-12 after its commitment to the Mountain West early in the day. Was not finalized. UVA agreed to moderate uh, the understanding to return to the Mountain West, but that was predicted of that was predicted of all eight remaining schools agreeing to stay. When Utah State decided to not return and go to the Pac-12, sources says UV UNLV officials agreed to pause and further explore their options. UNLV was set to take a deal from the Mountain West that included that included it and Air Force receiving a significant lump pay to stay in the league and be one of its linchpin. The decision by UFB to explore this option leaves the Mountain West potentially in flux. As Air Force commitment early in the day and U and UNLV's initial commitment on Monday were reviewed as part of the signs that the league could leverage its buyout money for the departing schools to stay. Well, I wonder if the Air Force is going to reconsider now. And quite honestly, I was actually looking for the Air Force to go into the American Conference because you would have had Air Force, Army, and Navy all in one conference. That would have been something to behold. But I said that last week. 
Hey, Air Force made their decision. But with Utah leaving, the Mountain Whistle is looking like UNLV, Air Force, Hawaii, New Mexico, Nevada, San Jose State, and Wyoming. As of right now, the Mountain Whistle will be down to seven schools. Who knows? San Jose State might join the Pac-12 next. Just to keep the line going of states in the Pac-12. And that would be funny, though. If San Jose State does join the Pac-12. That would be real funny. All right, moving on. Speaking of the Pac-12, files porching penalty lawsuit in federal court. The Pac-12 filed a lawsuit in federal court Tuesday challenging the leg- legitimacy of a poaching penalty included in a football schedule scheduling agreement is signed with the Mountain West Conference in December, back in December. With Oregon State and Washington State scrambling late last year to fill their 2024 football schedules in the wake of the Pac-12's collapse, they came to terms with the Mountain West on a one-year agreement that added six Mountain West opponents to each of the remaining Pac-12 school schedule. As part of the agreement, the Mountain West included language that required the Pac-12 to pay a fee of $10 million if a school left the Mountain West for the Pac-12. With escalators of $500,000 for each additional school. Well, they already put six out of there already, or five out of there already. So, this is getting interesting. Quote, this action challenges an anti-competitive and unlawful poaching penalty that the Mountain West imposed on the Pac-12 to to inhibit competition from members of schools in collegiate athletics. That's what the suit says. The poaching penalty settles the Pac-12 will exert and prize military fees for engaging in competition by accepting Mountain West member member schools into the Pac-12. The Mountain West imposed this poaching penalty at the time when the Pac-12 was desperate to schedule football games for its two remaining members and had little leverage to reject this naked resent, resent on competition. Do the Pac-12 have a chance to win this lawsuit? Because the Mountain West was ahead of the curve. They knew what the, what the possibility was going to be. Yeah, we can put our conference on y'all's schedule, but knowing that, that might not be enough for y'all. So I'm curious. Does the Pat have any leverage in this? This 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 a thought. I'm not a law major. I don't know much about the laws and all this other stuff, the language and all that, but it does beg the question. What kind of leverage does the Pat have, if they have any? Because the mind would seem like they knew what was coming and they was prepared. Just in case. We got to get to the Mountain West. It was ahead of the curve. It was one step ahead. Nebraska AD requests no more Friday games except Black Friday. Despite a working atmosphere last Friday night at Nebraska Memorial Stadium, the school is not looking for a repeat if event. Athletic Director Troy Dini said Tuesday he sent a letter to the Big Ten Commissioner Tony Patney requesting that Nebraska no longer host Friday night games other than its traditional Black Friday contest against rival Iowa, which take place every other year. Then he's speaking on the Huskers radio network, so he wrote a letter with support from the university chancellor, Rodney Bennett, and the University of Nebraska system president, Jeffrey Gold. Nebraska canceled in-person class Friday to allow students to prepare for the game against Illinois, which drew the school's 400th consecutive sellout, 400th, 4-0-0 consecutive sellout at Memorial Stadium. The Huskers squandered a late lead and fell 31-24 to in overtime, which I'm going to get to in that game when we get to our grid down roundup. Then he went on and says, quote, just because of the size of the stadium and the locale, I don't think we want to be canceling in-person classes. 
I'm sure the students don't mind, but at the end of the day, the more we can avoid that, I think the better off everybody will be. Is this really an academic thing that you're doing here? I want to ask that question. Is this really an academic thing you're doing here? Or there's another reason that you don't want to put out there. I don't know. That's why I'm asking. Because you cancel one day of school. One, one day. One day of school. So we can have a Friday night game in Nebraska, which was sold out. The studio body was there. And I ain't going to talk about the game just yet. I'm doing it in the Great Iron Roundup. So what's the real issue of having Friday night? Now, are you saying this is strictly academic? Okay. But I feel I just feel like it's, it's more to it than just canceling classes on us here and there Friday. You know? Now, if Cole is still watching, I would love to hear his thoughts because this is the kind of stuff Cole loves to talk about. This is the kind of thing Cole Jones will talk about. Shoot, I might, I might put it on, I might put it on the notes for him tomorrow morning so he can talk about it. I don't know yet, but I just want to know. But you know, as I can see, you on Michigan athletic director Wendell Murray sparked early in the spark early this month on schools conquering heroes podcast, saying the Wolverines would not be hosting Friday night games. Other Big Ten schools with massive stadiums such as Ohio State, Penn State have resisted hosting Friday games this season. Six Big Ten schools don't play on Fridays, while six other will play two Friday contests, including first-year members USC, Washington, and Oregon. So I just, I just want to throw the question: Are we doing this for academic reasons, or what is the reason why you don't want to do Friday night games, or you don't want to do primetime games? Primetime games. This is a primetime game on a Friday. You ain't got to worry about people going out somewhere they shouldn't be at, drinking. They can drink at the game, enjoy the game, and go home. That's like plain and simple. I just So I have to ask the question. Is it really academics or there's something else to it that you don't want? Like, is it money? Well, what are we doing? Because if you're Nebraska, you just have 400, cons- 400 consecutive sellouts. And we saying 400, we talking about the years that you weren't even worth a darn thing and you still had sellouts. So it can't. So I, I, I need to know something. What is it? Because I don't, I don't, I truly don't believe that it's a, it's an academic thing. I, I really don't. So it has to be more to it than that. So what is it? What is it? I have never seen Michigan. I can't say this. I've never seen Michigan host a Friday night game. I've never seen Ohio State host a Friday night game. I don't know if, if Penn State ever hosted a Friday night game either. But you know how crazy it would be at College Station in Pennsylvania for a Friday night game and a whiteout, which they like to do? Man, look here. Cole Johnson says, strictly academic, clown stop line. <laughs> These schools ain't making much money on Friday night versus Saturday night. <laughs> As Chris Tucker would say, follow the money, follow the money. And he said it on Rush Hour 2, by the way. Oh, yeah, trust me. I know my Rush Hours. <laughs> and I know which one he said it in. <laughs> so just, I'm just throwing that out there because, like, Oregon, Washington, USC, the new members of the Big Ten. We're only playing two Friday night games. So you telling me Nebraska, Ohio State, Michigan, none of y'all can handle two Friday night games in a season? Just two? Even one? What? what? Nothing wrong with a Friday night game? It's Friday night. The weekend begin. This is this is how society works. Once that last bell or that clock, clock is done on a Friday afternoon, it's the weekend. And the weekend ain't over until they go to sleep Sunday night. Sometimes Monday morning, if being completely honest. <laughs> so you can't handle one or two Friday night games? Just, I'm just, I'm just asking. 
I'm just asking. And then finally, this is an interesting news, but I know this one for sure. Cole Johnson, I'm putting this on your uh, on your list for tomorrow. Okay. Now, if you want to use it on the sports part of the show, you can. But if you want to do it on separate, you can too as well. But this is definitely going to be on the list. I can tell you that now. Matthew Slizn in a L dispute with UNLV Haynes on verbal. UNLV quarterback Matthew Sluker left the undefeated Rebels on Tuesday night over claims of unfulfilled verbal NIL promises from a UNLV assistant coach, a decision that illuminates the fragile current of the college football system when it comes to name, image, and likeness. Suka's agent, Marcus Mark <laughs> Comet, I see you. I see you. Marcus Comet tells ESPN that UNLV did, didn't come through on a verbal offer of $100,000. From an assistant coach, the quarterback's father, Bosch, should have told ESPN that head coach Barry Odom later said in a phone conversation that the offer wasn't valid because it didn't come from him, but rather from offensive coordinator who declined to comment to ESPN. UNLV said Wednesday in a statement that she was represent, representation made financial demands upon the university and its NIL collective in order to continue playing. UNLV athletics interpret these demands as a violation of the NCAA play for play rules as well as Nevada state law, the school said in the statement. Quote, UNLV does not engage in such activity, nor does it respond to impending threats. UNLV has honored all previous agreed upon scholarships for Matthew Sluke. Close quote. Wow. You know, see, this is a very dicey situation. The only interesting thing about it is it's not coming from a big time program. It's coming from the University of Nevada, Las Vegas, UNLV. Who's undefeated, by the way? Playing good football. Playing good football. They went to Lawrence, Kansas and knocked off the Kansas Jayhawks when they was ranked, I think, 14 in the country at 14 in the country at the time. And I think that was maybe two weeks ago. Because I picked Kansas. No, I did I was thinking about putting that game on the slate, but I didn't. However, um, first of all, why is your assistant coaches out here making promises that they can't cash? That's 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 the first thing. Okay, if the head coaches are the ones that are able to make this thing happen and not assistant coaches, then why is your assistant coach promising a hundred thousand dollars? I don't want to say the kid lying because I'm pretty sure I don't think he want to lie about getting paid a hundred thousand dollars to play college football. But this is the problem: the NCAA has not found a way to structuralize the aim, image, and likeness system. Now we hit to the point where promises have been made by people who shouldn't be making them, then we're not following it through because the head coach, who was the leader of the program, didn't, didn't make that commitment. Or we have guys transferring left and right because they ain't getting playing time, and they ain't getting playing time. They can go somewhere else and get more money and actually play. The NCAA has not found a way to socialize this at all. And it's getting, and it's getting more and more and more detriment every day. This man, who is on an undefeated team, an uh, undefeated team right now, who is in line to make the college football player, and they keep playing the way that they're playing, is now leaving because he can't get $100,000. He don't want to play no more. So well, I asked the question, 
if your assistant coaches are not allowed to make offers to recruits, why are they out there recruiting then? I know you can't do it on your own, but guess what? Um, you need to be involved some type of way, especially with this name, image, and likenesses out there. Because according to him, the assistant coach, he didn't say the head coach. He said the assistant coach offered him $100,000. But the head coach says, mm, I didn't validate that. I didn't push that through. So what are we doing? What are we doing? Why is your assistant coach promising something that you're not going to validate? See, as you can see, college football is quickly changing. Y'all remember one time you didn't have to care about getting paid. You just wanted to play college football. You just want to be a part of the atmosphere, the tradition, just to get to feel what it's like to be a college football player, especially in, in the lakes like Penn State, back then Florida, even the Florida State, Texas, Michigan, Ohio State. You just want to be part of the tradition. It's like the tradition made you want to be a football player in college. It's like, man, I want to see, I want to feel like what it's being to have this What it's be like if I had my jersey on with my helmet on, pads, playing in that atmosphere right now? What it feel like? That's what it used to be. Now that we are paying athletes and, you know, in certain cases, the way that NCAA makes money, kind of, you can, you can see why they should get paid because all the money NCAA is making and the kids ain't getting paid. What the heck? But all of a sudden, the NCAA didn't want to get out in front of it. They didn't want to put a structure together that is like reasonable to make for the athletes to make money reasonably. Why not slowly killing college football, which is happening right about now? Because now I'm not getting paid. I don't want to play for y'all no more. I don't care. I'm just going to wear a shirt. I'm going to go somewhere else for my final year because he only has one year left. This year is his final year. He only played four games, so he can red shirt and keep that year of eligibility, which is another thing he's a might need, might need to look at. Does four games, does playing four games allow you to be red shirted now with the fact that you can get paid to play now? And guys like him can do that? Y'all look at that too now. Incidentally, you need to put everything on the table. What we're going to do and what we're not going to do. Until y'all do that, y'all going to keep running the problems like this. And UNLV is in the midst of it. you just lucky it's UNLV and then not an Ohio State or a Notre Dame or a Michigan or a Alabama or a Georgia in this sense. Because if we get to one of the big time schools like this, everybody will be talking about it. Now, people are talking about it, but not a lot because it's UNLV. People ain't really paying attention to UNLV. People ain't really paying attention to the Mountain West, even though I talked about them for, for almost 30 minutes in this two-minute drill. But NCAA, you, you're going to have to do something because if you don't, if you don't, this is going to get out of hand and you don't have no control over NCAA sports ever again. You better figure it out now and stop wasting your goddamn time like y'all always do. Just, just throwing that out there. All right. Yeah, that's the two minute drill. Before we go to our first commercial break of the day, Cole has some things to say. Let me see what he had to say. He says, Pac 12 played Friday night because they didn't want to be buried playing Saturday night. Game since kickoff Saturday night began around 10 p.m. on the East Coast. That is true. Nope, they can't handle one or two Friday night games. <laughs> they want to compete with the SEC. They want the S. They want that SEC money, and they ain't there yet. Well, play on Friday night. <laughs> Four hundred consecutive sellout in us on a Friday night. That tells you if you play on a Friday night, people are still going to show up regardless. 
All right. Regardless. These schools are hating the fact that these young men are getting their money, their own money. The institutions can't promote. We train up amateur athlete athletes while sinking while sinking millions of dollars in gain some a game in ads. That was the whole point of why it came as such a big thing. The fact the power the powers in the players' hands made these programs toss their hands in the sky. No longer can they say these kids come out of our school because of tradition. They want to be broken off that cheta. And he also says, the more a school makes it rain on players, the more they are willing to wear their name with the school names in front of their jerseys. I mean, still. Now, if he goes somewhere else and he ain't good enough to play at that level, what he going to look like then? That is my question as we go into break. I, I <laughs> love you, you morons. You kiss on the block, new addition, dear, whatever the law firm is. <laughs> Sincerely, the U.S. Supreme Court. Ben Affleck, <laughs> Matt Damon. Go f yourself again, Jason. <laughs> <laughs> Whether it's news, the largest egg producer finds bird flu and chickens at a Texas plant, weather, devastating tornadoes rip through the heart of the United States, inspiration, a breast cancer survivor completed the journey of chemotherapy, and now begins a future one of matrimony or sports. Michael Jordan is shown on a photo with Diddy. LeBron James has a video extolling the virtues of a Diddy party. This has been yet another... <laughs> Beating a Dead Horse presentation. We got you covered. BS3 Network in association with Comey Media Incorporated proudly present The Morning Shift with Cole Johnson. Live every weekday at 8 a.m. Eastern, 7 a.m. Central. Shop hats and official sports gear at Liz. Liz is the leader and number one destination for hats, gears, and everything that moves you, making it the perfect shop for fans to find official sports hats, merchandise, and gear. Represent your team, your town, and your style with a snapback adjustable fitted hat or beanie from thousands of college and pro teams. Browse the very latest sports jerseys and t-shirts from the best teams out there. Liz has officially licensed professional and college sport team apparel and hats featuring the hottest brands and trends. Shop online or visit one of the 100 stores across the country. Locker rooms by Liz. Hey, Eagles fans. Join my man, Cool McCain, and a host of others as they break down every single game, every single week, in an objective manner, and also from a fan's perspective as well. Remember, this cast feels just like you. Nobody likes you. And you don't care. Fly, Eagles, fly. <laughs> Eagles Elite Podcast every Wednesday at 8.30 p.m. Eastern on YouTube and other podcast outlets. Join Ryan McCarthy. I became a Jets fan because Kurt the Frog was my favorite Muppet because he was green and the Jets wore green. That's how I become a Jets fan. And Dustin Henry. ESPN is cashing all in on let's pay a few personalities and we'll just kind of fill in the gaps. As they walk you through all of the world of sports from their perspective. The Albany Empire, it's a literal circus. No credentials required. Where, Ryan, say the tag. Where you don't need a press pass to talk sports. Every Monday at 
8 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Central on YouTube and where you can find all podcasts. Rams fans all around the world. It's a beautiful thing to be a Rams fan right now. Stafford's back. We're going to see about Cup. And running back, Karrion Williams. To a return. Lend me your ears. Or should I should say, Lynn Playmaker, your ears. As he breaks down week by week everything in the Los Angeles Rams canon. Number 99, Aaron Donald. Can't wait for 2029 to come to know that you are going in the Hall of Fame and it should be first ballot, no questions asked. Join the Playmaker as he breaks down everything Los Angeles Rams style in Ramily Talk on the Playmakers Blog Network YouTube channel and where you can find podcasts. All right, welcome back to Bearing Down the Gridiron right here on the Wednesday. And uh, Coach Johnson having fun in the chat. What are people in Lincoln going to do? The only game in town is Nebraska. Never been to the Nebraska, so I have no idea. The second biggest population center in the state of Nebraska is Memorial Stadium in Lincoln on any given fall or Saturday. But it did a game on Friday night last week. And it still was sold out. So, I mean, what's the problem? Tell me what's the problem. That's all I got to say. Uh, yeah, tonight, later on tonight, the uh, Eagles Elite Podcast, my man Kuma Kane. Eagles Diva and White, they're gonna talk about a, a a nice victory for the Philadelphia Eagles down in the Big Easy, the New Orleans, Louisiana, with the New Orleans Saints, holding down the number one offensive team in the NFL to only twelve points in their own building. That's a damn good victory. But they'll talk about it on their show how they feel about it. But for me, we're gonna go ahead and get into our gridiron roundup. And to begin our great iron rhino, we're going to start right there what we've been talking about. Lincoln, Nebraska. It was the 22nd Corn Huskers were hosting the 24th ranked fighting a lot and I it went in overtime because somehow the you know, Nebraska Corn Huskers couldn't hold on to a late lead. I Illinois scored and it went in overtime and they shut them down in overtime. They got the ball. Illinois got the ball first score right away. No time, no wasted sword. And they shut down Nebraska in overtime. Says disappointed because I did pick Nebraska. After what they did, after what they were showing, I did not think Illinois would be able to do another stunner. Because I like how they stunned Kansas. I didn't think they was going to stun Nebraska, and I was wrong both times. So great job, Nebraska. Gave you faith and yet blew it. At home, too, by the way. My fact, the one against Kansas, against no, the one against Kansas was in, was in Illinois. Champaign, Illinois, by the way. But yeah, Nebraska blew it. That was Friday night on the 20th. 21st was a Sunday. And we saw, well, these are the numbers, don't care. We saw Clemson look like the old Clemson. Woohoo! 59-35 beat down. And then uh what in the blue hell happened in Chapel Hill? What in the blue hell happened in Chapel Hill? We're gonna we gonna talk about that. There, there's no way I'm not gonna talk about that. And then the uh, big one of the the first big one of the early afternoon, the 3 30 slate. USC first Big Ten matchup in the Big House against Michigan. But first, we're going to Chapel Hill, goddammit. What in the hell happened here? What in the hell happened here? Now, those of you see the Big 70 right there, right? Don't even worry about them scoring 70. Look what they did in the first half. They were up 53 to 21 at the end of the first half. What the hell happened, Mike Brown? 
What kind of team did you put on the field in Chapel Hill? What was that? And the thing is, they scored in every way that you can you can think of imaginable that James Madison scored. They scored on offense, they scored on defense, and they scored on special teams. All in the first half. What the hell was going on? I mean, last year you started off great, and then you fell off right around basketball season, which is ironic because you can see what Cole Johnson put in the chat, <laughs> which is very ironic. James Madison played a basketball school. Bruh, basketball season started in November. Y'all ain't even going to wait in November. Because that's when you fell off last year. You fell off in November. You ain't even going to wait in November this year. You're just going to fall off the mat right away. And you came in undefeated. Both of y'all came in undefeated. You were 3-0. They was 2-0. And, and they walked in there. They walked in there. And dropped 53 in one half. 53. I was like, this is really happening right now. What the hell is this? Cole, you can say they scored 29 in the second half. They gave up 53 in the first half. That's still a big difference. What are we talking 24 points? We're talking four possessions. Jeez. And then Matt Brown comes out. He has no plans of retiring after no retiring this year or stepping down this year. Well, you better figure something goddamn out because, damn, James Madison whooped your ass in your own building. <laughs> North Carolina's football team allowed a basketball score to take, to take place on the grid. Huh? Yes. Yes. I didn't know what. I'm like, this is Luke. This is. Brett. <laughs> If I was able to watch that game, I would have because I would have loved to see the look on the fans' faces to see this. Like, this is legit happening in AI right now. And the ironic thing is, you know what James Madison's called? James Madison called the Dukes. The Dukes dropped 70 on a Carolina team. If you want ironicness, The Dukes dropped 70 on Carolina. And I'm pretty sure the Duke University was having a blast with them after that. Damn, we ain't even getting to y'all yet. And Dukes already beat you. But, man, look here. Let me, let me move on here. I got to get through this. <laughs> look at this. man, Chris Well, threw three touchdowns and two interceptions. While Barrett the third threw five touchdowns. One, two, three, four, five, five, five touchdowns on a North Carolina defense. <laughs> Let me move on because uh, if y'all did see the title of the show, that, that is the main talking point. And uh, the first one of the business is that the Michigan Wolverines gave the USC Chosen a fitting welcome to the Big Ten. It was a great game to watch on CBS. It's still strange to hear on um, Brad Nessner and Gary Darrison called Big Ten games instead of AC SEC games. I'm still trying to get used to that. And also still trying to get used to Kurt, Kurt Herstory and Chris Fowler calling SEC games at prime time. But I'm going to get to that later on when we get to Tennessee. <laughs> but a fitting, a fitting welcome to the Big Ten Michigan gave USC 24-27. Damn near on a, on a walk-off touchdown. And the simple thing is what play USC last year showed up against Michigan. You can't tackle the freaking ball carrier. Let me go to the statistics. Mullins. Mullins broke four tackles when he went for like 60-something yards to set up his game-winning touchdown. 
on the final drive for of Michigan? Three to four missed tackles. Bruh, do y'all know? This man, matter of fact, let me let me I want to make sure I got it right. So let me let me go. Let me go. I want to make sure I got his runs right, because even they said it on the broadcast. Like three damn three damn runs really was the difference between USC walking out one and oh in the big ten is them walking out 0 and one. Literally. Like, I don't I don't understand. I really don't. Mullins, three minutes left in the first quarter. 53-yard touchdown run. That's one run over 50 yards. Oh, he also had a pick six, which was not a smart throw by um, Miller Moss. That was not a smart throw at all. That was a terrible decision on your part, sir. But, yeah, you live and learn. Donovan Edwards, 41-yard touchdown run. This man, that run the game for Michigan was ridiculous. All because USC can't tackle. Jonathan Matthews, sports judge, I'm calling you out. What the hell happened to your defense? You looked good against LSU in week one. You was handling business. I forgot who you played next. You get to Michigan. Oh, you can't tackle. Here we go, all over again. What the hell happened? All you had to do was take the damn ball carry. That's all you had to do. Take the ball carry. And you come out with a dub. And it would not have been pleasant for Michigan and Michigan fans. Because that would have been that would have been two and two on the season looking like um are we even, are we even gonna make the playoffs? But now they beat you, now they looking real good right about now. Miller Mons, you did have a nice game, 283, but that that pick that you do, ooh, that was not that was not a smart decision. And then Mons won for 160 yards with two touchdowns. I mean, bruh, orgy. The quarterback for Michigan only threw for 32 yards. Do y'all see that? Michigan did not do anything passing-wise. Run, 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 run. And you know they're going to run. That's the crazy part. You know what's coming. And y'all can't stop it. And y'all just can't stop it. Michigan let it do for 32 yards. They ran for 290 yards. <laughs> what? Oh my gosh. I just don't know. I, I just don't know. USC, welcome, welcome to the Big Ten. <laughs> Continue on our slate. LSU, they took care of the other LA school. That'll be UCLA Bruins. They dubbed them up 3417. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna get I'm gonna come back to Oklahoma State and Utah. But shout out to SMU. Um, Cole, I know you didn't like this game too much, but I didn't expect SMU to drop 66 on them. I'm being, I did not expect 66 to get dropped on TCU like that. I really did. Damn. Just damn. 66. <sighs> well, we know who owns the Dallas area this year. But let me get my laugh on. Oh, oh. <laughs> well, well, well. Utah. They took a trip to Oklahoma Stillwater. They faced off with the Oklahoma State Cowboys as members of the Big 12 for the first time. And you know the title says a fitting welcome. And we had a picture of Michigan and Tennessee. We didn't have a fitting welcome with a picture of, you know, Mike Gunny and the Oklahoma State Cowboys because guess what? They could not beat Utah. 22 to 19 and the score wasn't even that close to be quite honest with you. As you can see, they scored 16 points in the fourth quarter. That tells you what Utah was doing to Oklahoma State. And it's quite funny because uh, if y'all recall, do y'all know who I picked to win the Big 12? No, it wasn't Mike Gundy. No, it was not Mike Gundy in the Oklahoma State Cowboys. No, it wasn't there. 
No, it wasn't Kansas State. No, it wasn't Kansas State. No, I didn't pick Kansas State. Mm-mm. Nope, I ain't picked them either. Oh, I picked Utah. First year out the gate. You will come right in, take over the Big 12. Well, they got one check mark going on right now. They already knocked off Oklahoma State. <laughs> and Cole Johnson's probably laughing because he know he know what clip he used when he when he did my uh bearing down a grid down uh commercial. <laughs> I know it. I just knew it. My God, he was. He, oh, my God. This is why I didn't pick y'all. This is exactly why. You lose games like this. <laughs> Bowman. Two touchdowns, two picks. Do you just like throwing touchdowns and picks at the same time? Don't get me wrong. They had uh, Utah had to start um, Zach Wilson's little brother, I think Aaron Wilson. He threw two picks in the touchdown, but, man, did they run the ball down the all damn throws. Bernard, 25 carries, 182 rushing yards. Just, y'all are who we thought y'all are. Yes, I'm putting a quote from the late, great Dennis Green, RIP, sir. They are who we thought they are. And that's the Oklahoma State Cowboys. They are who we thought they are. Thank you, Utah, for made it, for making it plain and clear for me. Thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, Coach Johnson says USC has had one job, and they found out they found and they found out to be to be something the big. Uh, get on that mullet, Mike Gundy. See, this is why I picked Utah. This is why I picked the use. This is why I picked the use because I knew you, Oklahoma State they gonna lose the games that I think they gonna win, so I went the other way. I'm a... I can't deal with you. Okay. I can't deal with you. I can't deal with you. See? I should I should I should go play that commercial just so y'all can hear what which one Cole Johnson used. Cause I knew it. I just knew it. Mike Gunny I just knew it. Mike Gunny and, and Golem State, they want I knew it. I knew it. But you on the three and one, so Still got a lot of season love, so I didn't think I had, but I did pick Utah, and I'm starting to look pretty good. Michigan State, where it was in Boston to take on the Boston College Eagles, and I was like, I don't know how this game is going to go. Both teams look good, but I'm going to roll with the home team. And it was Bandana Night, too. I was like, yeah, I'm glad I picked Boston College because Bandana Night, I don't like picking against Boston College. Against well, well, most of the time when they had Bandana Night, you usually go against Florida State, so I had no choice but to pick Boston College there. Most of the time, he would go for the state way, which would suck. But this time, they did bend down the night against Michigan State. I said, I got to I gotta go. Boston College and Boston College did me right. Um, We're going to talk about Tennessee and Oklahoma in, uh, but real quick. The one at the bottom, the one that says uh, 13, KSU 9, final 38, BYU. I'm going to say it like somebody that's very familiar that I love to watch and Cole Johnson know who it is. Kansas State, y'all got y'all ass whooped. This is, plain, this is just plain and simple. Y'all got y'all ass whooped. This is Avery Johnson, not the basketball player, but the college football player named Avery Johnson. How many times you had? You had like three of them? Jeez. I was looking for a competitive game. And y'all got your ass handed to y'all. Every Johnson threw two picks. Two picks against BYU. They turned the ball over three times, if I remember correctly. I'm just like, this is three, two interceptions and a fumble loss. Three turnovers. Y'all got your ass with them Provo by the BYU Cougars. Y'all should be a senior, y'all got them self. Not saying that BYU ain't, ain't a good team. They're undefeated. But damn. Like that? 38 to 9? Damn. Damn. Now, game of the week. It was in Northern Oklahoma. Carter's game day was the. It was my spotlight game of the week. 
15 ranked Sooners hosting six ranked Volunteers and the OU's first ever SEC game as members of the SEC. And uh, the score might say a 10 point victory for Tennessee, but I'm pretty sure to Oklahoma and Oklahoma fans and probably the Cole Johnson as, as well. It felt like a 30 point game. You felt bad for you. Oh, you couldn't do goddamn thing on offense. They couldn't do a goddamn thing on offense. Good gracious. That Tennessee, Tennessee got a damn defense. Which is not good for me being a Florida fan. But they got a damn defense. Good gracious. The offense, the offense of Tennessee was struggling, but you wouldn't know it because that Tennessee defense was on top of OU. They was on top of it. Look at that. Look at this. 10-3 after one. 9-0. So it was 19-3 at halftime. It was 22-3 going to the fourth quarter. That defense was on their ass. Oh, you couldn't do nothing. Zip, nada. It was te- it, you felt bad for Oklahoma. Except for Cole Johnson because he's a Texas fan. And anytime Oklahoma can get beat, especially in embarrassing fashion like Tennessee did to him, Cole Johnson's going to eat it up and love it. I mean, I'm out of y'all. I'm gonna try to say his name once. Eli Mariel. That's okay, numbers like 194 passing yards, one touchdown. But Hawkins Jr. 132 passing yards, one touchdown. And he and he was the leading rusher with only 22 yards rushing. Now, I'm going to let y'all know. Cole Johnson, he don't like seeing quarterbacks being the leading rusher on any football team. He might make it something because it is Oklahoma. But when your leading rusher is your quarterback and he only got you 22 yards, damn. Damn. Just damn. That's it? That's all you can muscle up? For your leading rusher is 20. Oklahoma ran the ball 34 times as a team. Do you know how many rushing yards they had as a team? As a team, they ran the ball 34 times. 34 yards. I mean, 36 yards. 34 carries, 36 yards. That is an average of 1.1. Per attempt, one point one per rush. One point one. That was the Oklahoma's one year attack. Now you probably ask me, well, well, I bet Tennessee didn't do much better. Uh, fifty two carries, one hundred and fifty one rushing yards. That's almost three yards a carry. That's literally damn near two more yards per carry than Oklahoma did. That's that's just terrible. Thirty four carries for thirty six yards. Jeez, Louise. Like I said, a fitting welcome to the SEC given by Tennessee to Oklahoma, and a fitting welcome by Michigan to you to USC for the Big Ten. A fitting welcome. Now, those of you who want to know how I'm doing, I went six and four. Okay, Nebraska took an L. I did not expect an ass whooping to be handed out in Chapel Hill, especially the way that North Carolina got their ass whooped. Y'all heard me about USC. All you had to do was talk at a goddamn ball carry. You win the game, and don't even get me started on Kansas State. But six and four, 24 and 16 overall, so I still feel pretty good. That's eight games above 500. I think we can do better. I know we can do better. And then here's your newly top 25 list. The Longhorns are still number one, followed by Georgia, Ohio State, Alabama, Tennessee, Ole Miss, Miami. Cool, McCain. You better be happy and stop being hesitant on your happiness when it comes to the Miami Hurricanes. They are ranked seven in the country. You ain't been relevant for how long? So enjoy it while you still can. 
the Oregon Ducks come in eight, Penn State nine. Then Utah you was coming at number 10. And then you see 11 through 15. Boise State is in there at 25. Nice to see Boise State. BYU is in there at 22. Nice to see them in the rankings. So there you go. That is our gridiron roundup for week number four. We're going to take our other break here. And then when we come back, we got our campus tour and more footageness from Cole Johnson, especially when it comes to Oklahoma. We'll be back. College game. The way that this season has been going? Uh, yeah, anything is possible. The women's college game. And how passionate Angel Reese was at that press conference. They got their mojo now. The WNBA. AJ Wilson, Brianna Stewart, one and two. Followed by Brittany Griner, Aaliyah Boston, Jackie Young. Or the NBA. The Lakers had a 0.8 chance of winning. And then what happened in the fourth quarter? LeBron James by himself outdid the Clippers. You will get any and all of the information right at your fingertips or your earlobes. Join the playmaker as he breaks down all things basketball in Shooting Lights Out on the Playmaker's blog, network, YouTube channel, and where you can find podcasts. The Big Ten. How would people on the campus of Ohio State University, how would they look at Ryan Day? The SEC. Until somebody can show me that they can beat Georgia outside of Alabama, I got to roll with the Bulldogs. The Big 12. Mike Gundy, show me something. I picked you last year, okay? The ACC. I need Dabo Sweeney and the Clemson Tiger to show me that they are understanding what the mission is that I have. And the Pac-12. Twi- <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> I'm sorry, the Pac-2. Join the playmaker as he breaks down every single week all the hot college football games. Bearing down the gridiron on the Playmakers Blog Network YouTube channel and where you can find podcasts. Rams fans all around the world. It's a beautiful thing to be a Rams fan right now. Stafford's back. We will see about Cup. And running back, Karrion Williams. To a return. Lend me your ears. Or should I say Lynn play make your ears. As he breaks down week by week everything in the Los Angeles Rams canon. Number 99, Aaron Donald. Can't wait for 2029 to come to know that you are going in the Hall of Fame. And it should be first ballot, no questions asked. Join the playmaker as he breaks down everything Los Angeles Rams style in Ramily Talk on the Playmakers Blog Network YouTube channel and where you can find podcasts. Yep, yeah, I hope y'all enjoyed that. I did that on purpose. That is the off. Three other shows that I do by myself, okay, with the help of Cole Johnson, who voiced all three of those commercials. Wanted to give him some love on that. Thank you, sir. And you heard, heard you heard what clip he used from the Big Twelve, right? And you see why I went Utah instead of Oklahoma State. Thought it's fun that y'all should know that and get to hear it and see it for yourself. So, thank you for that. And the footness of Cole Johnson continues. Quarterback should never lead your team in the rushing. Ever. Can't do it. Can't do it. Thank you, Tennessee. Why can't you talk? Nope, I'm not doing it. You nope. That's what it's gonna stop right there. You will not get me the same Rocky Top. You will that will never happen on this show. Never. And then he used what I did to Kansas State to Oklahoma. Oklahoma, you got your ass whooped. <laughs> he said, and I love it. Stephen A. Smith laughed when the Cowboys lose. <laughs> Told you the foolishness with Cole Johnson never ends. Oh, yeah. No. Uh, Texas A and them ranked again? How dare they rank those scallywags? They lost to a school that just got beat down by Northern the Norths. Boo! Well, you have you. 
if you was paying attention, you would have known that uh, that's the only loss <laughs> thus far. So, let's see if they can keep it. Because now, let's get to our uh, campus tour, shall we? Oops, there we go. And to begin our campus tour, we're going to go right to Friday night in the Big Ten. Washington. Ooh. Remember, Cole, when we talked about this, you used, you bought up a trip that you that you can see how it's going to work out. And there is that trip. Washington Huskers traveling all the way to New Jersey to take on the Scarlet Knights of Ruckus. Now, mind you. Scarlet Knights are three and zero. The Washington Huskies are three and one. This game is at eight PM on Fox. Rutgers is a two and a half point favorite at home. You you was asking if that trip was going to come at some point. Here it is. There go that trip. That's that trip. Would it be too much for Washington to handle the fight all the way across the country? I mean, all the way across the country. Like, Seattle's like up here. Okay, let me put my finger. Seattle's like up here in this corner right here, and they're going all the way across the whole country just to get the records. That's interesting. Then it hit the side of the slate. <laughs> The uh, you know what I call this game? The I can't live with the expectation game. You know why? Because one of these two ain't gonna live with the expectation. Go both of them, one of these two schools gonna have a second loss in back to back weeks. Somebody got lose two in a row, and it's in Manhattan, Kansas, where the twenty three ranked Kansas State Wildcats hosting twenty eight ranked Cowboys of Oklahoma State. Well, the mullet find a way to finally win a game that he can actually win in a ranked matchup or with Kansas State. Bounce back from that ass whooping that they took in Pro Bowl against the BYU Cookers. The I can't live up to expectations bowl in Manhattan, Kansas. Oh, that's going to be a fun one to watch. Because I get the last two weeks, every one loses. Because <laughs> I knew damn well not to pick either one of y'all. Man, that's going to be lovely. Oh my gosh. And if I know Cole Johnson, he wants the mullet to take his second second of L. He can kill this by Kansas State. So that's gonna be a fun one at 12 p.m. Oh, 330 AT&T Stadium. That's one boo from Cole Johnson. Just in fact that I say AT&T Stadium. It's gonna be another boo because it features Texas AM, who is ranked 24th in the land. And just for the heck of it, because I know how Cole Johnson is, he'd like to be petty. It might be a third boo because it's Arkansas. <laughs> and what has Arkansas done for anybody lately? <laughs> That's if I know Cole Johnson the way I think I do. Okay. Now, let me look at this. Uh, oh, yeah, by the way, um, Kansas State is four and a half point favorite over the Cowboys. That's those of y'all who are ready for that. Now, when I look at this game, we are talking about let's see, three and one versus three and one. Both teams are shockingly three and one at this moment in time. Can't be mad at that. 3 30 p.m. on ESPN. We got the Aggies of Texas AM four point favorites according to, according to Vegas. Okay. Uh ESPN analytics says this is a 56% chance that the Aggies will take down the Razorbacks. And like I told you, I told you there's three booths. One that affected that I said Texas AT and T said oh, two that I said is free train Texas A&M. and three because they just Arkansas. And this is what Coach Johnson says. The fact that Arkansas and Texas A&M agreed to play a game in Jerry's world should be outlawed. <laughs> and he says, I'm rooting for a tie. I just like the razor bet just a little bit less than the Aggies. I know this man too well. <laughs> Told you three boos. 
AT&T Stadium, Texas A&M, and in fact, it's just Arkansas. <laughs> you just don't like Arkansas. I don't even know anybody who actually likes Arkansas. Well, I do know somebody who likes Arkansas. Let me take that back. Hope you ain't watching. But, eh, 3-1, 3-1, okay. But, uh, you should be 4-0 if I'm being quite honest with you, Arkansas. You should be 4-0. You should be undefeated. You know why you should be undefeated? Because you sat there and you didn't finish off Oklahoma State. When you should have finished off Oklahoma State when you was in Stillwater. I think week two, if I remember correctly. You should be 4-0, but you're not. And that's the why. Okay. From Jerry World, we head to uh, Orlando, Florida. The UCF Knights, who are undefeated. Who are undefeated. And it feels so good at 3-0, hosting the Colorado Buffaloes. 3-1 Colorado Buffaloes coming off an, coming off an epic win against Baylor in overtime down at Boulder, Colorado. Now they're coming to the bounce house. Coach Prime, you ready for the bounce house? Because I don't think you ever think you've experienced the bounce house before. This UCF Knights team, they are... Still, the UCF Knights of oh, old, they still can they still can run all around. They can still spread you out, make you defend every blade of grass there is out there. And I'm gonna tell you right now, uh, if I was to tell you this spread, y'all gonna laugh y'all behinds off. I'm looking at the spread. That thing says 14 and a half in favor of the UCF Knights. Oh my gosh. Coach Prime and the Buffaloes are two touchdown underdogs. Damn. Damn. ESPN Analytics says it's an 82% chance of UCF winning. They only giving, they not even giving Colorado 18%. It, 17.8%. Good gracious. Mm. Uh, if, if, if Coach Prime is using this as a big boy material, I, uh, I don't feel so good about the Knights. I ain't know it's 14 and a half. Damn. I ain't, damn, I ain't see 14 and a half. Good gracious. Ooh, oh boy, man, 14 and a half. That's a that's a big match. That's a big match. Yeah, yeah, but we'll, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. Oh, he Dion's coming back home. Dion experienced Florida State being the proverbial bounce house for the Shine Shine State since when they have never considered Florida State to bounce off. Don't you ever say that something like that ever again. There's a reason why Florida State, Florida, and Miami don't associate itself with UCF. There's nothing bouncy with the three major schools. They want to hit you in the mouth and keep going about their business. There's no bouncing. That's a UCF thing. And speaking of bouncing, uh, know that they ain't trying to bounce back in a very, very important game at home against 15 ranked Louisville. Because if Notre Dame lose this game, you can kiss the playoffs goodbye. As well as me, too, because I put y'all in my playoff system. So that's, eh, I'm going to need y'all to sh- Marcus Freeman. You, you can't lose this game. You can't lose this game. You, 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 you. It's, but it is Louisville, and Louisville ain't begin talked about. Louisville has been flying on the radar, handling business, going about their way, just winning three games, being three and zero. But Notre Dame is a six and a half point favorite. Six and a half point favorite. Okay, that's Notre Dame. Can he live up to expectations? Because ESPN has the faith in him. If I'm looking at this right, 67.6% chance of winning is the Notre Dame Fighting Irish, and only 32.4% is in favor of the Louisville Cardinals. 
very, very interesting to treat an undefeated team like Louisville this way. Very, very interesting by ESPN. Look here. See, this is why I can't deal with Cole Johnson and foolishness. The foolishness from Cole Johnson. And that game is exclusively, by the way, just Notre Dame Louisville, exclusively on Peacock. Not NBC. Uh, no, 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 no. See, they put a fast one on people, Cole. This game is not going to be on NBC. This game is going to be on Peacock. Because I'm pretty sure Notre Dame fans are like, all right, time to turn it in. Time to turn the NBC to watch the you be not you will not be watching this game on NBC. This game is strictly on Peacock. Oh, they put one on y'all on this one. And watch how many people are gonna forget this on Peacock and they're gonna turn to NBC and be like, where's another day in game that no, it's exclusively on Peacock. Pay attention. Oh, they got them on this one. That's the funny part. I'm not dealing with no, I'm not even no, I'm not even alone in that comment. I refuse to. Speaking of exclusively on Peacock, 7 p.m. on Saturday. East Lansing, Michigan. Michigan State Spartans coming off their first defeat at the hands of Boston College. Now here come number three in the big bad wolf of Ohio State Buckeyes. Oh, exclusively on Peacock, 7 p.m. That's after Notre Dame and Louisville, by the way. And uh, this is what Coach said. NBC was smart. Golden Dahmer fan would hate that. Do Michigan State have a chance in this game? That's the question. Do they have a chance? Like, is there any hope for the green and white against the big bad Ohio State Buckeyes? Uh, ESPN says no. 92.8% Ohio State. 20. Michigan State is a 24 point underdog. 24. Have fun, Michigan State. Have fun. That's all I got to say. Sticking at the 7 p.m. time hour and ESPN. It's, it's a sneaky, interesting game all of a sudden. Very sneaky, interesting game. The 2 and 1 Stanford Cardinals getting a big time ACC dub. In the Q-Dome against the Syracuse Orange men, they go from the Q-Dome to the Death Valley in the ACC when they head to Clemson, South Carolina, to take on the 17 ranked Tigers. You know... The fact that you see, this is how I know you didn't pay attention to last week's episode. Because if you did, you would have known I did not have fun doing that episode at all. And if you had noticed, I didn't even laugh at Florida State when I did the episode. So that's how I know you weren't paying attention there, sir. Because if you did, you would have saw last week's episode and you would have understood what I was going through last week. And ironically, it's both Florida and Florida State ended up winning last Saturday. Ironically. You might need to go back and watch last week's episode and determine how much fun I had doing that. Talk about me having fun at Florida State Spence. What's wrong with you? I didn't even have fun doing it last week. Why would I do it this week? Especially when they won, they beat Cal. You know they shouldn't won. For some reason, Cal Cal can score points at Arbor, but they can't score points at Dope Campbell Stadium. Make it make sense. Stanford, even though they had a surprising start, nobody still believes yet. 21 and a half point underdogs going into Death Valley. Nobody, nobody believes. Nobody. But NBC is showing the college game. But it's not Notre Dame. It is 19th rain final the night of I of Illinois going to Happy Valley. Of College Station, Pennsylvania, to take on the ninth ranked Nifty Lions of Penn State. We are Penn State. Now, this is an interesting game. 
because Illinois is having a surprising season. We're talking about surprising season for Stanford. Illinois is having a surprising season as well because who had Illinois 4-0 on a bingo card? Who had Illinois 4-0 on a bingo card? When I say 4-0 on a bingo card, we talking a win Eastern Illinois. Okay, we, we understand that one. A win at home against Kansas. Didn't see that coming. Central Michigan, we understand. And then they went on the road to Nebraska. We just talked about it in the first in our first game, and they beat Nebraska in overtime. Who had Illinois four and zero on a bingo card? That's what I want to know. Because if you did, you need to go play the lottery. You might actually win the lottery for it. But now the fun should be in should end here. Unfortunately, it's the ninth ranked Nathan Lions at home. It's probably gonna be a whiteout because they love doing whiteouts in prime time games. So I'm looking forward to that. That's all I'm saying. And cold here. You should have had some fun because Florida State got whooped and you're and you were just pissed that the Florida Gators got a hand to them. It wasn't even fun watching Florida State get beat. It was literally depressing. Like, damn. There's no fun in there was no fun watching them lose the way that they've been losing. Like, this is embarrassing. This is legit embarrassing. And then on top of that, the Florida game was looking just as embarrassing as them. I was like, where's there's no fun in none of that. And yeah, you tried. You definitely tried. It's not happy about it when it comes. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. We are Penn State. Don't don't even try it. Uh, a sneaky, a sneaky game that I'm keeping an eye on in the Big 12. Cincinnati coming off a shutout win over Houston. Sorry, Cole. Yeah, them Cougars got shut out. By Cincinnati last week. That was I watched that game. I was like, damn, Houston can't do nothing. Legit nothing. They got shut up. 34 nothing. If you over you want another score between Cincinnati and Houston last week. 34 nothing. They taking that and they going to love it to take on the Red Raiders. If I know anything about the Red Raiders, they love offense games. They love shootouts. So I could see a shootout. Both teams are three and one. I couldn't see a shootout. But if Cincinnati continues to play even the way they've been playing defense, Cincinnati might come up with a dub, even though they are two and a half point underdogs going into Lubbock, Texas. And ESPN says 57.8% in favor of the Red Raiders of Texas Tech. Interesting choice there. Very interesting choice. And then uh, we get to our spotlight game of the week. Spotlight game of the week. And I mean, there's well, court. There's only one game to really pay attention to. It is Tuscaloosa, Alabama, SEC matchup, top five matchup for the first time in I think in a long time or maybe ever. These two teams are facing each other with no title on the line. Number two, the Bulldogs of Georgia. Number four, the Crimson Tide of Alabama. It goes down in Tuscaloosa. Cause the game, they would be a Pat McAfee going to get his sign on once again. Will he do the uh, – who's that coming down the track for the Georgia Bulldogs? Or is he going to do the road tie for the Crimson Tiger – for the Crimson Tide fans down in Tuscaloosa, Alabama? Now, the last time the two teams faced, he he he, he, he did the uh, – I don't know. He did the whole uh, Georgia tent, and then he reversed it and says, no, I'm picking Alabama. And Alabama ain't no winning. So I'm looking forward to see what Pat McAfee does in Tuscaloosa this time with this go around. This is going to be very interesting. Now, Kirby Smart had two weeks to be pissed off about that performance against the Kentucky Wildcats, which I don't know if that's a good thing for Keller DeBoer in the uh, Alabama Crimson Tide. Okay. This is a little interesting here because uh, if you know anything about Kirby Smart, look, beating Kentucky by one point, doesn't sit well with Curry Smart. So he's going to have these boys focused and ready to go. Now, now, do we remember? Tropical Storm slash Hurricane Haley is on her way to Florida, Alabama, Mississippi, and possible Louisiana. Okay. So we got to keep an eye on that because this may affect the game. Now it does look good from, from Doppler's reports. It does look pretty good. 
by the time they get to kick off. But we never know. It's a hurricane. It's a freaking weather. The weather have a mind of his goddamn own, especially here in Florida. It can rain for 10 minutes and it'll be sun shining like a mud afterwards. And then all of a sudden it's a pouring down rainy 20 minutes later. And then 30 minutes later, it's, it's bright sunshine. You don't even, you even know it rained. So we don't know when it comes to this um, hurricane slash tropical storm. Okay. We just don't know. We just don't know. All right. Go, Johnson says. I love Houston, but the crews are, are as, as horrible in football as they are. As, oh, oh. 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 See, this is what happens when you like me or Cole Johnson and uh, your fandom doesn't cloud your objectivity of the team that you love. I'm pretty sure that hurts Cole Johnson to say, but it's the honest truth. He also said, it is strange. It, it's strange to see Alabama and Georgia face off and it's not in December. They still might face off in December, even though Texas is looking real good. Your Longhorns look real good. I mean, very good right now. So this this the loser of this game could be on the outside looking in because Texas is looking that damn good. Even though you do play Oklahoma and you do play Georgia Company. That one point win in Lexington should have had Georgia drop more than one spot. You beat Kentucky by one point. One point. That's the bullet I was talking about here. Get over it. Hopefully the storm will pass through the area by then. I just hope there won't be nobody. There'll be no wind or flood damages that occur. You never know when it comes to hurricanes and tropical storms when it comes to the south. You just never, ever know. All right. That will do it for our uh, campus tour, but don't go nowhere. We're going to jump straight into our bear down, play 10. Give me the Scarlet Knights. That's a long trip for the Washington Huskies. Even though I do feel like they should be pissed off on taking one on the chin, like Cole mentioned earlier, to uh, Washington State out of all teams. Washington State, you couldn't beat your in-state rival in Seattle in September. No weather problems, no rain, no snow, no coldness, no none of that. Perfect football condition weather, and you can't beat Washington State. Give me Scarlet Knights. Might be an upset for y'all by me picking Scarlet Knights. Um, honestly, I just flipped the corn and like, who should I roast more? And it's probably gonna be Mike Gundy and the Oklahoma State Cowboys. So give me Kansas State to bounce back from that devastating ass whooping that they took in Provo and uh, send Mike Gundy back to Stillwater with two straight losses. Cole's gonna hate me. Cole's gonna hate me. Cole's gonna hate me because I'm picking the goddamn Aggies or Texas A&M to go into Jerry World and handle business against the Arkansas Razorbacks. All right, you can hate me this week. I don't care, but I have to be objective and honest. I'm picking Texas A&M. Damn it! Give me the Knights of UCF to. Hey, Coach Prime, welcome to the Big Twelve. I know Baylor gave you a. Gave you a welcome, but that wasn't a proper welcome. Allow us, this is our second year in, in the Big 12. Let us give you the proper welcome to the Big 12, Coach Brian. And you see up ahead of business against Colorado. I'm taking Notre Dame, damn it. I picked y'all to get in the playoffs, so damn it, y'all better win this goddamn game. Y'all should be able to defend home field this time. Since you lost to Northern Illinois last time, so you're pretty sure you know. Fans are looking at y'all like, y'all, if y'all don't defend the home, the home field this time, it's going to be some problems. Marcus Freeman. Is there anything to be said? Is there anything that needs to be said about this? Okay, thank you. Uh, I know Stanford's up to us, and this is a surprising start. I get it. But I think Dabo is trying to show that he still got it. I think Dabo wants to show that he still got it. So yeah, give it, give give me this the fighting Dabo's uh, clips and Titus. Illinois, y'all off to a great start, four and zero. I give it to you, but y'all not going to have it. Probably y'all not winning. 
We are in state. I'm taking since I don't care what ESPN says about this. I'm taking Cincinnati. That damn defense. If that defense show up in in, in Lobet, Texas, Texas, Texas Tech can't do nothing with it. I'm sorry. Give me, give me Cincinnati. Give me the Bearcats. And then a spotlight game of the week. The fans I voted in a very close vote. And 51.7 gave it to Alabama. And 48.3% voted for Georgia. Now, in our first four weeks, I went with the people that voted. You know, we put Notre Dame together. You know, we picked it, uh, Texas to beat Michigan together. We picked it, um, who was out? Who was week three? I don't remember week three. And I know last week we all picked Tennessee together over Oklahoma. I can't remember week three. Matter of fact, can I look it up? Who we picked week three? Who was week three? I should know it by heart, but I don't. That's my bad. Uh, who we had week three? Oh, Alabama destroying Wisconsin, which they did. But this right here, y'all went with Alabama to defend home turf against the Georgia Bulldogs. We went four and four. We ain't going five and five. Give me them damn Bulldogs. I'm taking Georgia. <laughs> I'm taking Georgia, David. And Cole knew I was going. Stop with the drama. You're picking Georgia. Yes, I'm picking Georgia. I'm going. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm going blood off, David. Nick Saban ain't there. So the whole somebody outside of Alabama beat Georgia. Kellen Boer, show me that you you ready to take the rings from Nick Saban and you, you beat Georgia. Until then, I'm big in Georgia. God damn it. I am big in Georgia. 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 To go on the road and get a big dub. In Tuscaloosa. Cole also says, uh, go find me for Marcus Freeman will be, be coming out the world wars if Notre Dame loses to Louisville for a second straight year. Yeah. And I believe the last time they lost to Louisville was actually in South Bend, too, if I remember correctly. But yeah, here we go. I'm taking workers. Kansas State, Texas A&M, UCF, Notre Dame, Ohio State, Clemson, Penn State, Cincinnati. And I'm taking Georgia over Alabama while the fans are taking Alabama over Georgia. I got to do what I got to do, man. I got to do what I got to do. See, as you can see, my my fanfare for Florida has nothing to do with, with me picking or how I talk about games. If I feel you're the better team, that's what I'm going to pick. And I'm picking Georgia. Hey, I picked Georgia to win the damn game conference. What does that tell you? And I picked Florida State to win the ACC, even though I'm looking stupid for that pick right now. But I put my bias aside, and I picked USC. And last week, I put my bias and hatred to the side of USC and picked them to beat Michigan. Right now, being a jet is not working for me right now, if I'm being completely honest. But, hey, this is what we do here. On the Pennsylvania football level, we be objective. We be objective. That's what we that's what we here to do. But with that being said, thank y'all for tuning in to this edition of Bearing Down the Great Iron. You, you can catch the replay of this on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, iHeartRadio. You can catch this live on 502 American Angel Radio in Indianapolis on Friday, primetime action after shooting the lights out. And then you can catch this Saturday, 11 a.m. Leading you up to kickoff on Saturday morning, college football day, on a Real Rise Radio, all right? For tuning in. Thank y'all. I am out. I will see y'all next Wednesday for more Bearing Down the Great Iron. But if you want to hear from me again tomorrow, I don't know what time yet, but tomorrow will probably be around about 3, 34 o'clock. Ramley Talk. Rams got their first win of the season. Happy about that. And we beat the big bad bullies. That is. So catch me on that tomorrow. Then if you want to stick with college football, next Wednesday, right here, same time, Bearing Down the Great Iron. Your boy, the playmaker, signing off. I will see y'all next week.